are you doing? I'm fine, Andrew. That's very good. It's great to be with you. Uh, Doppler effect, are you having trouble with it? What? Are you having trouble with Doppler effect or is it just this problem? Yes. Okay, so let's try and sort it out. It was a little bit, mis I, I think it was missing some information. So I might have to make some assumptions. So, but let's go through it and let's make sure that we've got it sorted out. The first thing that we're told is that we've got a racing boat. Now, here's the waves. I'm sorry, my drawing isn't very good. This is the racing boat. And the racing boat is moving at a constant speed, we're told. So we know that the velocity of the source, let's just erase that for a second, the velocity of the source is the racing boat. The velocity of the source uh, is constant. We, yeah. That's all we're told at the moment. Okay. Yeah. The second thing that we're told is that we've got a spectator here who's standing on the shore. Uh, and so I'm going to assume that the velocity of the listener, of the observer, the spectator, is zero wow. meters per second. Is that a fair... Are you happy with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the person standing on the shore and the boat that's out at the sea. Now, what we're told is that the observer observes that the frequency changes. The frequency changes. Initially, the frequency is at a frequency of 580 hertz. Yes. And it decreases to the second... 430 hertz. Yeah. Okay. So what we need to recognize is that this is a decrease. And it tells yeah. us that it's a decrease. Now, the first thing that I want you to understand about the physics of um, the Doppler effect is when something decreases or when it increases, it tells us something about the relative motion of the object. Okay, are you with me? Yes. So if we find the frequency is decreasing, what does that tell us about the boat? Is it moving towards or is it moving away? Do you understand? It is moving away. Ah, very good. So initially it was at a certain place and now we're going to say it's moving away. It's moving further away from the, the observer. So this was the initial, velo the initial frequency. Uh, let's just presume that that was the frequency of the source. And now that it has moved away, this is going to be the frequency that the observer hears the sound at. Are you with that? Yeah. So that was the important thing. We need to know that it's moving away and it has a decrease. Now... What was the next thing? We were asked to do the following. We were asked to calculate the speed of the boat. The speed of the boat. Now, Roland, um, that is we want to calculate the speed of the source. Uh, we've already said the, f the, the speed velocity of the observer is zero. So now let's write down how we're going to do this. When you get a, a Doppler effect problem, you need to establish direction. That's very important. And what I do is I always try and get the direction from the observer to the source being the positive direction. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We're going to see the boat is moving away. So it's moving in a positive direction. Have you got that? Yeah. Roland? Hello. Hello. Did you hear me? Yeah. I'm going to say that the direction that the boat is moving away from the observer, from the observer to the source, is in the positive direction. So we'll keep that as positive. Um, yeah. Now, what we've got to recognize is that on the data sheet, they give you an equation. When you, write, when you do a Doppler effect equation, please write down the full equation as it's given on the data sheet. So you must put in the plus or minus, and we're going to say the velocity of the learner divided by plus or minus the velocity of the source. That's in brackets, times the velocity of the source. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, the next thing I need to just get clear 
and I want you to follow with me very closely, is that we've told that the frequency has decreased. So let's look at that equation very carefully and see whether we want the numerator to be bigger or the denominator to be bigger. Here we go. You see, what we've told is that we can substitute, before we substitute in, the frequency of the source was 480. Let me just change my pen here. So that was that one. That's there. This is what the answer is. This is this one. Okay. So what we've got to have here is a fraction where the denominator is bigger. Can you see that? Because this yeah. is, this, uh, the, it, it's not going up, it's going down. So this value must be, this we know is zero. So let's just work it out now. Because what we've got to try and do is work out, is it the plus equation or is it the minus equation? And that's what I'm busy trying to show you. So when we get this, the one thing that they haven't done is they haven't given you, or you didn't give me, the velocity of sound in air for this yeah. question. Is it in the question or can I make it 340? Okay. I'm going to make, assume that the velocity of sound in air is 340 meters per second. It's between 330 and 340. We might as well use 340. So okay. I'm now going to substitute in. I'm going to say, okay. yes? So I want to ask, if I use 730 meters per second, the speed of sound. The speed of sound, if you use 330. Yes. Okay, then the figures will be different. Okay, I'll just need to redo my calculations. It's not a problem. Uh, okay. I'll do it for 330 for you. Um, and we can check it. So let's... They usually have to give it to you. And in a final exam, I'm sure they will. Okay? So we know that this one is zero. What about this one here? 330. Is this going to be plus or minus? Remember, we want the denominator to be bigger. So must I make, how am I going to make the denominator bigger? Over here. Must I subtract or must I add? I think you must add. Yes, very good. And we're going to say addition there. And then we're going to substitute our values in. The value for the, velo the frequency was 430. The value for the frequency on this side was 480. Agree? Yes. Now it becomes an arithmetic problem, don't you think? Yeah. It's not difficult. This is the physics part done. Now all we have to do is we have to simplify in terms of the arithmetic. So we're going to say 430 times 330 plus Vs is equal to 330 plus 0 is 0 times 480. Okay? Yeah. Are you with me so far? So now what I'm going to do, let's call up the calculator and we go here for the calculator. Let's just clear that previous thing. We're going to say 430 multiplied by, uh, let's just see, what was it? 330. 430 multiplied by 330. 141,900. Okay. Will you remember that number? 141,900. Yes. Yes. Plus 430. Vs is equal to, now we want 330 times 330 times 480, okay? So yeah. we're going to go through, uh, 480 times 330 equals 158,400. 158,400. Yeah. And we're, what we're going to do next is we're going to subtract. Agree? Yeah. So we're going to get 430. Vs is equal to 158 minus 141900. Have you done that? Have you got the answer there? Uh, no. Okay, let's do it quickly. Here we go. We're going to make that answer a negative plus the answer that we had earlier, which was uh, 158, I think. Uh, 158, 400. Uh, oh, I've done the wrong one. Let's do it again. It's 158,400 
minus 141 900 we get the answer of 165 uh, 16500 yeah. 16500 do you agree yeah. therefore vs is equal to 16500 uh, divided by um, divided by 430 so this is what vs is so let's divide it by 430 and we'll get the answer for 30 equals and get the answer of 38,37. Round it off to two decimal places. Remember the third decimal place there is a 2. So we can say that the answer is 38,37. Let's write it down. 38,37 meters per second. And remember this is away from the shore. Yeah. Away from the shore. Okay. Yes. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Okay, very good. Now, just let's remember the physics that's involved here. The important part, and you got it right, was that we recognized that when it was decreasing, the object was moving away. When an object moves towards you, then that frequency is going to increase.